Welcome to Fusion Tonight. We're going to laugh, pray, give, and learn together. Tonight, we get back into the swing of our crazy, fun, busy Wednesday nights with the crazy, fun guest, Pastor Scott Cooper. Now, scream and yell and jump up and down for our host, Mr. John Cooper. Welcome to Fusion Tonight. I'm your host, John Cooper. How are we doing tonight? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I haven't seen you guys since like last year. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. It is a new year, though. Exciting. The year 2023. Exciting. Anybody got those, those new year resolution, new year, new me type of things going on? No? I told myself I was going to swear less this year, and then I had to spend 10 minutes messing with this microphone in the hallway, so that's out. I'm already on, <laughs> on to the next goal. Yeah. But I'm hopeful, if you did set a resolution, I am hopeful that you are able to stick to it, you're able to persevere and push through everything. Um, you know, already this year we saw somebody that kept failing over and over, and they were determined to meet their New Year's goals, and they met it. Um, I mean, Kevin McCarthy, 15 times, he was like, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the Speaker of the House. It was crazy. It was crazy, right? We're not, we're not taking political sides, but it was nuts watching that. 15 different votes to finally get through. You know, you think you have this kind of predetermined agreement. Everybody feels like they know where things are going, and then you have a couple people just kind of derail the whole thing. You have all these pundits saying, oh, this is a black mark on America. You know, and you're watching the news, and GOP leaders are like, we're embarrassed. Meanwhile, me as a Methodist, I'm like, oh, thank God. Our organization is not the only one struggling to, <laughs> to, to figure some things out. So, but yes, anyway, new year, time for some big things, time for some perseverance. Even if it takes us 15 times to do something, we are going we are gonna to do it this year. We're going to do it at Fusion. We have a great show for you tonight. Pastor Scott is our guest tonight. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, talking about not political elections, but religious ones. So very excited. So let's dive in, you guys. Let's do it. Let's start the show, Chris. All right. Well, this is fun. Nothing says you are not attending church well enough during Christmas than having a belated Christmas gift on your desk. <laughs> so I will safely store that in here. That is exciting. I don't want to open it in case it's something like really cool and everybody gets jealous. <laughs> All right. Well, let's kick off the year doing some church business during our open mic time. This looks a lot like joys and concerns. So this is our chance to lift up anything and everything on our hearts and our minds that we can talk about, laugh about, be about, and pray about. So I open the floor for the first time in the new year to anyone that has anything they want to lift up tonight. They're like, the year just started. We don't have anything going on yet. All right, Jake, take it, start us out. I was like, it was, I was like, what's wrong with Indy? And then she's like, no, it's Columbus. And I was like, ah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we're starting off wishing people well as they move from one. Yeah. All right. Hey, they're moving to a new place where there's hopefully a house and a place to live. So. <laughs> Uh, it has a good good zoo of football fans. All right. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they want to lift up? Yeah, Lisa. Well, I'm happy to see John here. Yes. Yeah. Woo Mr. John Bentley. Bentley. Welcome back. Yeah. I didn't even know you were gone. Again, Christmas yeah. gift. Big indicator. <laughs> have not been present. Been a busy holiday week or Christmas break. I keep forgetting we're in church. I'm allowed to say Christmas, even though I'm allowed to say it whenever, but especially in church, I should say Christmas break. So welcome back, John. 
Good luck on the move. Anybody else? I know I know it's New Year. We have a clean slate. Maybe there's not a lot going on. Anybody got any baggage from last year? No? <laughs> leaving it back? Leaving it back in 2022? All right. All right. Well, well, let's not drag it on. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and Holy Father, how blessed are we to once again be able to gather in the space to be with one another and to be with you. Lord, we're excited to... Uh, start a new season of fusion worship and and to be able to dive into a whole long list of, of new topics and, and things we can talk about and discuss and and hopefully have conversations up in this room that help bring us closer to you and, and bring us closer to to the folks in our community both both right here in Cedar Falls and and, and further out uh, across the country and the globe Lord everything that we do uh, within these walls is to glorify you and to lift you up and and to to lift your words to hopefully not only inspire those of us sitting in the pews uh, but to inspire anyone that happens to catch an earful of of the good word on a Sunday morning or or on a Wednesday night and so Lord as we as we gather back we we start out lifting up prayers for for a safe move uh, for friends as, as they, they pick up and, and get ready to, to begin their lives in a new location and meet new people and, and hopefully establish themselves at a, in a new church community and, uh, and get rooted in their new community. Lord, we welcome back John Bentley. Um, we're so excited anytime uh, we get to see him. We know that he's been battling uh, health concerns and he's been relying on you, he's been relying on his doctors and he's been relying on all of us to be a support system. And so. Uh, anytime we get a chance to see him uh, upright and smiling and, and telling jokes or, or sharing uh, his his wide knowledge uh, of the Bible is one of our uh, biggest experts on uh, on Scripture. Lord, we're just so thankful uh, to have him uh, in our presence tonight and, and to have you continuing to, to walk beside him uh, through his struggles. And Lord, as we, we start this new year, new season, we ask that you consistently, not just because it's a new year or a new week or a new month, but because it's a new second of the day, give us that chance to, to drop our baggage off at your feet, to be able to stand up tall with no weight on our shoulders, knowing that we don't know what our future holds, but we know that it is you who holds our future. Walk beside us today and every day and let us continue to be the best versions of ourselves possible. And as we pray for these things, Lord, we do so uh, with the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. We are now going to go into our mission of the month. Chris has an awesome video prepared. So if you turn your uh, attention to the screen, it's going to tell you all about that. And what's cool is during this time, it's our offering time. So we don't do a traditional pass the plate. We have two giving jars at each doorway. Stand up, stretch out, take good into your heart, and hopefully put good out as well. This is your time for offering. Hey everybody, it's Chris here in the First UMC Media Studios Blanket Fort. Our January mission of the month is Church World Services Blankets Plus program. Church World Service is a great Christian organization. They're also the folks who bring us the crop walk in the fall. Now, if you've ever made a blanket fort like this one, you know that a blanket is a pretty versatile thing. When we're cold, we can wrap up in a blanket to keep heat in. And when we don't have shelter, blankets can be used for that too. A blanket can be used as a bag to hold all your belongings if you don't have anything else to use. 10 bucks buys one of these blankets that Church World Service will give to families that are displaced by disaster or, or by poverty. So who gets these blankets? 
well, people in our own country who, who lose their homes due to tornadoes or fires or floods, or people in other countries around the world who are displaced by conflict. In addition to blankets, Church World Service also works around the world to rebuild lives and communities through agricultural, educational, and vocational support. Church World Service's programs are, are designed to help refugees not just survive, but to, but to prosper in their new homes. You know, a blanket might not seem like much until you've lost all that you had. And then a blanket is everything. It's security, it's warmth, it's shelter. Church World Service Blankets is our January mission of the month. You can give online at our secure giving portal at aboutfirst.com slash giving. And we thank you for supporting our January mission of the month. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event. You can see him on Sunday mornings, but he's a little bit more loose on Wednesday nights. Please give it up for Pastor Scott Cober. You want to sit on the left, the right, or the middle? We're going to talk about elections, so that might be the first uh, giveaway on where this is going, Scott. <laughs> Fit in the middle. All right, so Pastor Scott, there's always workings going on in United Methodist Church. We elect leaders, we have conferences, we vote on things, we make decisions. There's a lot going on in Methodist Church, um, more than we can get to in 15 minutes, but let's talk about some more procedural things that are exciting that have gone on in the church. The first being, we have a new bishop. We have a new You just got to talk really I can't hear you at all. Oh, you just got to hey, talk Look what I found. Oh, it's not <laughs> So we we have a we have a new bishop. We have a new bishop, bishop and Kenitha. And I'm like Kenitha is Kenitha. Yeah, that's her first bishop. name. Um, His name is Kenitha. So Bishop Lori Haller retired. We have Bishop yeah. Kenitha. Uh, I'm not going to try to say her last name until I got it down, and I don't have it down yet. Bigham Sai. It's right there. Bigham Sai. Bigham Sai. So this yeah. is our new bishop, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. She was just elected. You were part of that process. For those that are unaware how these workings go, sure. Walk us through the process and how this came to be. Yeah. How is a bishop selected in the United Methodist Church? So there is a, a conference that's called the Jurisdictional Conference, and I was a delegate to that uh, conference in November, and it was held in Fort Wayne, lovely Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, yeah, talk to me later about Fort Wayne. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, it was a fine place. So we, uh, we met there, um, delegates from uh, the North Central Jurisdiction, so that includes Iowa, uh, Minnesota, the Dakotas, Michigan, Illinois, those areas. So when you look Central. at a map of the United States yeah. and you go north yep. and central, right. that seems to be the geography You've we're got referring it. You, to. Yeah, you, you figured out exactly. It all goes over to Ohio, where I'm originally from, Columbus. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it includes all that, that region. So delegates, so 24 delegates from Iowa. I was one of those 24. Um, and one of the, and this was all somewhat new to me. This is the first time I was a delegate to jurisdictional. And one of our members of our 24 uh, was a, um, a candidate for bishop. And she's a friend of, she's a friend of the show. She's a friend of Fusion. Lynette Clambeck was Yes. Also a candidate. And uh, she was voted in as, as a bishop. So the process of becoming a bishop, um, you, as a candidate, as Lynette um, discerned the call to, to put herself uh, in the, the pool of leadership, although all pastors are automatically put in the pool, but um, she then went to our delegation and we interviewed her about why she felt called to be a, a bishop um, and so then we supported her candidacy, and the same thing happened for Kenitha, um, and she's from Michigan. 
So she was being supported by her delegation. Lynette was being supported by our delegation. And then we interviewed each of the, the candidates that were coming from every conference. Okay, so there were roughly 10 that were in the mix um, that were really being promoted by their delegation to, to be a bishop because of their leadership talents. So the delegates then are interviewed by each delegation. So our, our 24 met, uh, had a Zoom conversation with Kenitha and with the other nine um, candidates. We have that prior to going to Fort Wayne, but then once we get to Fort Wayne, then there's voting. Um, there's no white smoke involved or anything, but, uh, but there is voting. <laughs> And, uh, and so you, they have to get um, a particular amount of votes. I think it's 60% of the overall votes to be elected. It's not typical for, for that to happen on the first vote. Kenitha was elected on the first ballot, which had not ever been done that I was told in the north central jurisdiction. It always typically took six ballots before there would be so the or polar opposite of the House, <laughs> House of Representatives not, is what yeah, you're saying. Interestingly enough, you mentioned that whole thing. So it wasn't 15 <laughs> ballots. It was on the first ballot, um, and, uh, and she was elected bishop. So, um, and she had my vote from the beginning. So you actually select, there were three openings for bishop. You select three the first time you vote. Once somebody's selected, then you vote for two. Once two are selected, you vote for one, and then it's, uh, you know, decided who the the three will be um, that are coming. So we elected so, three bishops. So walk, walk me through that. So, so you're, you're picking three. So the yeah. first vote, once somebody has 60%, that's the first bishop appointed. Right. Do you know at that point where they're getting appointed? No. No. Okay. So, um, so it's not like, yeah. oh, how come, you know, Michigan gets, it's not one of those things. It's not right. like, you know. Yeah. No one has first status, first dibs kind of thing. Yeah. We were just getting three and then so they you, divvy them. We knew that three bishops were retiring, so that's why we needed three bishops okay. to fill the spots that were So it were could be open. any number of bishops. That's right. But this particular one was three. For this three. particular year, this, this particular season, three were needed, so three were selected. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, you know, Lynette got my vote, but so did Kenitha and uh, and and another individual that actually didn't get voted in, but we won't talk about that. So at any rate, <laughs> um, Kenitha got voted in on the first ballot, and uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting to be a part of that. And then we didn't know that, that we would receive Kenitha. Um, that's not our decision. We, we weren't voting for that. Uh, there's an actual committee, a bishop's committee, that um, looks at all the openings, looks at what the the gifts and graces of the, the candidate is and what the conference uh, leadership is asking for, and they, they match that as best they can. So, so it's very similar yeah. to when we, we get, you know, if a, a pastoral pastor. opening yep. opens, yep. we don't just go out and say, oh, give us Pastor Scott, and That's we'll, right. we'll write him yeah. a check. It's, it's a pretty you tell us there's an opening, and we'll yeah. assign from a pool based on... Yeah, strange part of that whole process. So Lynette's a friend. And uh, she's waiting to find out where she's going to go. She has to wait in her hotel room. All the bishop candidates, the three <laughs> candidates, are in their hotel room, and a knock would come at the door. So they do it. So they yeah. don't do it like Catholics with smoke, but they do it like the <laughs> Pro Football <laughs> Hall of Fame exactly. ceremony. Like, oh, they knock. Okay. Yeah. And Interesting. So, yeah. So a knock on the door. Lynette, you're going to uh, okay, hold on. I'm Minnesota. on this episode of The Hills. It's <laughs> yeah, on Hulu. Right. I really want to see what Lauren's going to do. Right. Like in a minute. Okay, so they're just I don't sitting. I think of what you just spoke of, but yes, my wife watches what? The Hills, oh, okay. and like that's I, I need something new, Scott. <laughs> anyway, right, dairy, in the hotel dairy room, Dairy Girls. Go with Dairy Girls. It's on Netflix. Go with what? Dairy Girls. Dairy Girls? The Dairy Girls. Like, that's an appropriate show we're talking about? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> Maybe it's not appropriate. you got to be really careful I just with finished, titles. I These. just finished it. I just finished it. <laughs> okay. Dairy. Dairy Northern Ireland. It's, okay. It's, All right. It's positioned there. Just, and it's in the 80s when, just, when it's, I it's grew up. It's a church, up. church show. I just, you know, just, you know don't want to be funny. promoting, it's funny. you know. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. You know, you never know where you're going to get. All I right. don't. You never know. We've lost... Lost the plot. They're in the hotel room waiting for a knock at the door. Yeah. Watching Dairy Girls. Okay. Yeah. That's where we were. And there. then boom. Um, yeah. You're you're assigned. Kenitha, you'll be be uh, coming to Iowa. So yeah, that's that's part of the process. So she was gathered there with her uh, with her husband, and she has two children, two two sons um, that are ones in. 
grad school and the other's a freshman in high school. So that's a little bit of a transition for their family for, Absolutely. for that transition, but yeah. Absolutely, so you mentioned um, that she got your vote. Yeah. And so walk us through, you know, you talked about there's an interview process yeah. and everything. Right. What about Kenitha stood out to you yeah. that made you say, this person would be a great bishop in the United yeah. Methodist Church? Yeah. So um, she has a, an interesting background in that she chose to be United Methodist. I'm, I'm a cradle United Methodist. I was born into it. I was baptized. And so I've always been United Methodist. And um, that's not to say that I didn't choose at some point to be United Methodist. But it that was something that was of interest to me. I thought that that's, um, for her to choose later in life, I think she's, in her story, she would say that she was in her late 20s when she uh, chose to be United Methodist. She grew up in Austin, Texas. She was Baptist. Uh, in the Baptist um, tradition, uh, women would never really think about becoming a pastor. That's not a role that, that she would have been allowed to, so she would have never had that as something she would think of. But she was pursuing education. She went to Harvard. She, you know, a number of things in that Just regard. nonchalantly throw out that she went to Harvard. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, she, you know, she went to Harvard, yeah, you know. Yeah, but that's another, you know, she's, yeah, she's... That's remarkable. She's, uh, yeah, so she's well-educated and, and smart individual. Um, but... Uh, so in her process of, of uh, she was thinking she would probably teach theology. That was kind of the track she was on. She then um, got acquainted with uh, actually an African Methodist Episcopal Church, um, her background being that. And, uh, and so that was her introduction to uh, Wesley and the Methodist understandings and the Methodist way or movement and theology, and she resonated, connected with that. Um, so that was interesting to me that she had made that step. She then um, went to divinity school and uh, chose to be United Methodist pastor. Uh, so she served in churches, but she was also a district superintendent. Um, she was up for being bishop uh, six years ago when Bishop Laurie was elected bishop, and she actually um, took her name out of the running so that Laurie could become a bishop. And that, too, was just her character, her humility of, of saying, now's not the time for me, but it would be for Laurie. So um, that that's interesting. She then went on to become uh, the chief officer of the Connectional Table, which is a a group that is all the conferences around the world that um, do a lot of mission and ministry for United Methodists. There's a, a group that oversees uh, the mission and ministry of, of the global church. Okay. She was the chief executive officer for that for the past four years. The CEO. Been in that. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she had leadership um, skills and uh, that that match with what a bishop needs to be able to to offer sounds like yeah. an easy vote i mean you're talking about Most, yeah i mean but that's that's fascinating you right. grow up baptist mm -hmm. go to harvard to be a teacher mm -hmm. and then you become methodist and become a preacher and then yeah. you you know decide to step aside so Lori can be bishop and now mm -hmm. you get to On finally be a ballot. bishop, your, yeah, yeah, first, first ballot, ballot like be a bishop no yourself brainer. and appointed to the same yep. conference mm -hmm. as Lori. So that's, right. I mean, that a lot of remarkable things just kind of yeah. aligned. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's incredible. So we've established the process. We've established uh, who Kenitha is as a person. Yeah. Obviously sounds like very qualified bishop. So someone like you that's so plugged in, um, you know, I, I think we try to be a transparent church and talk about things going on in United Methodist Church, where things are going. I don't mm -hmm. think you've ever shied of telling a congregant, oh, this is where I stand and mm -hmm. things like that. Yep. Being more plugged in, though, than maybe the rest of us, because you have to deal with this day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Now that Kenneth is in place as our bishop of the yeah. Iowa Annual Conference, what do you see as our future under mm -hmm. her leadership going forward. Obviously, there's some shaky waters to navigate, but what, what do yeah. you see for, for our church with right. her leadership? Yeah, there's a lot of changes going on in United Methodist um, in general, right? There, there are uh, 
there is a lot of energy that's going on at, at the level of a bishop where she's managing some churches that are disaffiliating, um, no longer being connected with the United Methodist Church. About, that's roughly about 10% of churches in Iowa that are considering that, that uh, possibility. So she has to manage that, um, those transitions, and we all lament that, that change that, that is occurring. Um, so helping to lead during that time and be a, the bishop for all people is, is what uh, um, she's, she's got to be. So uh, yesterday there was a, a gathering um, that Matt German actually was a part of. Uh, you know, everybody knows Matt German, hopefully. Um, he and I and, uh, and about 20 of our closest friends were, uh, were gathering to, to help her um, think about how to best... Uh, onboard, that was the language everybody was using, onboarding um, the bishop. Uh, so to bring her aboard and what do you need to know about Iowa, what are we facing, those kind of things. So I was really interested in the way that she uh, spoke and, and talked about her own leadership. She's very relational uh, and she has a way that I would say she's not about being top down on things and that, that I would say that in my 25 years of ministry in the United Methodist Church, there has been a, a little too much of that. You know, like what the bishop decides is kind of top-down decision-making, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, she has an approach that I think is more movement-based um, and, uh, and looking for innovation. And in the context that you are in ministry, in your local church, your town, um, your community, uh, what's best for, for your church is the kind of thing she wants to help support, you know? So creating an yeah. environment and a, and a space for innovative um, ministry where we uh, continue to, to reach out in the name of Christ in our community and to, to make uh, Christ known um, through our churches. So I just really appreciate the, w the way that she's taking that, that she doesn't already have, well, here's my three, my three <laughs> things, you know. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have a, you know, a board of ideas or bullet points right. or, she, or a slideshow. Yeah. She indicated she wants to build relationships first. And so if there are any, anybody that's not, you know, um, not necessarily in agreement with maybe some of her opinions or her ideas, she wants to have a conversation about, about the way forward and how it might fit um, in your local setting. So all that's to say that I, I just was really pleased in the way that she's approaching her start. Um, it feels right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and that's peace of mind for those of us that go to church. You know, when we're yeah. not in uh, positions to make decisions, you right. want to know that your leadership is looking out for you. And I, I like... You know, yeah. my personal preference is, is a relationship building type yeah. style that she's doing because um, ultimately it's not about one person at the top running the church, right? Yeah. It, we're, right? We're all here for God, and how can we all contribute to building that kingdom? So that's mm -hmm. really exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's unfortunate, you know, when you say 10% of churches want to disaffiliate, but I look mm -hmm. at 90% of the churches in the state of yeah. Iowa that are saying, sure, let's go. Let's yeah. do, you know, let's build something together. And so, right. um, you know, even in the midst of uncertainty in certain areas, it's comforting to know that we have someone that's going to come in, that's going to listen, mm -hmm. and it's going to build something. Yeah, that I think it's hopeful. Can sustain it's, us. Yeah, it's good. So absolutely. So um, when's the next time that you get to meet uh, Bishop Kanitha or, or get a yeah. feel of where things are going. So yesterday I definitely invited her to come to the Cedar Valley and, uh, that we would show her around. Um, and, uh, Dave Glenn Burns was a part of that conversation too. So, you know, you and I, and, and all that the Cedar Valley has to offer, want to be able to introduce her, uh, around, um, to area churches in general, mm -hmm. not just Cedar Falls first, but, uh, so, but we'll be a, kind of a host for her when uh, when that can get on her schedule she's got to go to what she called bishop charm school first <laughs> which, which she doesn't know what she's supposed to learn there but she, <laughs> bishop she called it charm school yeah. charm school uh, i don't know i'm not sure what it covers but charming i'm sure yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, Pastor Scott, uh, that's a lot of information, and I thank you for coming on and explaining sure. it. Because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a nerd for some of that stuff, and I yeah. like to know what's going on in my church right. and, you know, you know, these big things that are happening. And so I'm excited for hopefully I get to meet her at some point and, and, and right. get to see where our church goes. Yeah. And hopefully it just continues to go up and up, up and, and up. up. Yeah. So thank you so much. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, give it up for Pastor Scott. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I, I, drew, a, I drew a picture of you. Oh, that's uh, nice. Just a that's generic nice. white guy with white hair and a goatee. So that's, there you go. That's <laughs> refreshing. I'll, I'll frame that. Thank you. I, that would, it would flatter me if you did. Really? It, can you, if you put it on your fridge. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's it has to go it, on your fridge. Yeah, I'll take but it. you got to put it over one of Ethan's things. I want him to know he's been... <laughs> Demoted. <laughs> I, like, I like John more. He, he draws pictures. So yeah. There you go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for the night. I hope you learned something about the process of the United Methodist Church. I hope you're excited about Bishop Kenitha. I hope uh, we get a chance to meet her and welcome her to uh, this wonderful Iowa conference. And yeah, so till next time, I'm not going to tell you who uh, next week's guest is because until they're booked, I don't know. So, <laughs> but I'm sure it'll be a good show next week. So until then, we've gathered. I hope we've grown. Let's go be Christ for one another together. Have a great week. Now I get to figure out what this is.